did you know that you can claim unclaimed property or unclaimed money through the Washington State Government Department of Revenue? You can go on there, do a search, and find out if there's any money that is owed to you. And it's amazing, but there are uncashed payroll checks. There are undisbursed retirement funds that are just being held, waiting for someone to claim them. So my goodness, go claim them. Uh, yesterday, I did a search for me, just in case, <laughs> J-I-C, <laughs> and I found that there are some funds due my, my younger son, Jared. So I immediately emailed him with a, with a picture of the website and stuff and said, you need to go check this out, which I believe he's probably already has. I mean, yeah, that, that is so awesome. Uh, just thinking there might be money just waiting for you there. Uh, today, we're going to look at a gift that God has for you, that perhaps some of you have not yet claimed. Did you see what I did there? Yeah, smooth, it just happened, yep. We're in a series called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, and we're talking today about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This this is one of my favorite subjects. I'm so excited to be able to, to just look at what the what the God's Word has to say about it. Uh, our our movement, the Assemblies of God that that our congregation is a part of, has done done the the hard work of going through several different biblical beliefs and written what they call position papers on it. So I, I checked it out. I would encourage you to. It's really cool. I'd go to ag.org and look for position papers. And the one on the baptism, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit is very thorough, scholarly, but practical. So anyway, I, I encourage you to check it out for yourself. So last Sunday, we talked about how new birth is a fresh start. And I believe that's why uh, Jesus had that phrase, born again, because when you, when you get a, a, a spiritual rebirth, you get a fresh start. And how do you get that? When you repent of your sin and you put your faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and he is the author, the generator of new life inside of you. And why do we need new life? Because all of us were born spiritually dead. We are born into sin. Sin makes us dead inside. But the Holy Spirit makes us alive inside. And that is so great. He brings life to us. But Jesus said, but wait, there's more. There's a promise worth waiting for. And it's, it's written down in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 to 5 and verse 8, where that time period between where, uh, where Jesus was, uh, was dead, buried, you know, crucified, buried, and rose again. That time period between he rose again and when he ascended back to heaven, Jesus met with his disciples and with the believers several times and encouraged them, kind of gave them next steps. And he said, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. Now, some of you have read this verse hundreds of times, but did you ever really put it together? When did God the Father promise this? In Joel 228 to 232, through an Old Testament prophet named Joel, God said, there's going to come a day I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. So Jesus is referring to that. How do you know the promises of God? I hope you are reading this book for yourself. So you know what God's promises are, and you can claim them for yourself. Because Jesus said, my father promised you something, and it's coming. And Jesus said, John baptized with water. What was that baptism about? Repentance of sins. So John John got us going, kind of got the the fresh start going. But Jesus said, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, who is he talking to at this point? He is talking to to a group of people, not just, don't think 12 disciples, but followers of Jesus, apprentices of Jesus, followers of Jesus. At this time, probably about 120 people, uh, mostly just there in Jerusalem that had seen Jesus alive and many had been healed and delivered, saw him die, saw him be raised from the dead. So he's talking to them and he says, in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And skipping down to verse 8, he said, but you will receive power. Somebody say power. Power. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. 
So Jesus is talking to a group of people uh, about whom he has already said, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. We talked about this more at length last Sunday. He breathed on them. They received the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, but there's more. There's another thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. He wants you to be baptized. Jesus wants you to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. And we were singing that earlier in the worship service today. Immerse me. I'm desperate for you. Immerse me. Jesus wants you to be empowered, to be transformed in how you live your life. And I love this. The Father keeps his promise. He keeps his promise. Uh, His timing is sometimes a little different than ours. But he keeps his promise. In Acts chapter 2, starting in the very first verse, this this is what happened. On the day of Pentecost, and we're celebrating the anniversary of Pentecost today. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. So again, talking about approximately 120 people gathered together. Now, what is Pentecost? Pentecost was a Jewish holiday. It did not start on this day. And it's actually very significant that it didn't. It is an Old Testament holiday. This, this, uh, the holiday of Pentecost had been going on for hundreds of years before Jesus. And over, over the centuries, it, it morphed in different, uh, different ways, but the, this, what this holiday is essentially about, it is the Feast of Weeks. It is the feast to celebrate the fact that God has given us a harvest of wheat. So it is a, it is a, a holiday focused on gratefulness for harvest. Now that, that's very significant because Jesus talked about harvest in a different way. He talked about how people are sort of like wheat, ready to be gathered in to God's kingdom. We are the harvest. So on this day of Pentecost, it was a day celebrating harvest. And it says that the believers were gathered together. Uh, Jesus had said to them, your names are registered in heaven. That's what you should rejoice about. So these are, these are Christians. Jesus has given his life, so he's paid the price for our sins. He has breathed on them the, and said, receive the Holy Spirit on, that, on the, the day he rose. Uh, it's talked about in John 20. And then uh, the, the believers were meeting together in one place. There's power in unity. You get a bunch of people praying for the same thing. That is a very powerful thing. That's why we love to pray every time we gather. That's why we have two prayer gatherings a week, even beyond our worship service on every Wednesday night. We have teaching. We have gathering right here in this room. We are calling out to God, and we are seeing him do stuff that is amazing. And we believe that a lot more is coming in our community, in our church. We, there is power. Jesus said in in another place, if if even two or three agree as something in my name, I'm going to do it for them. That is awesome. So that's just verse 1, Acts 2, chapter chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 2, suddenly... So picture this setting. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind storm, and it filled the house where they were setting. And I am desperate for us to have an experience like that today. And really every time we gather, the Holy Spirit would come in in a tangible, manifest way and do what only he can do. Verse 3, then what, appeared, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. So they could hear something. They could see something. It was, uh, can you imagine looking around this room and seeing little blades, little tongues of fire lighting on each person's head? This mighty wind sound, the sight of the flames. Wow. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait a minute. Did it say just a couple of them? Oh, everyone. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages or or other tongues uh, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Let's break that down just a little bit. So it uses the phrase, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. On that day when Jesus was meeting with the, the disciples, and, uh, after he had risen from the dead, and he said, he breathed on them, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. This phrase, filled with the Holy Spirit, is never used 
to describe being born again. Not, the, not this phrase, filled with the Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. It always describes people who are already believers. You, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have repented of your sins, you've asked him to come into your life, he has already breathed on you, and you have already received the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christian, you have the Spirit of God living inside of you already. Praise God. That's what makes the difference. That's amazing. But there's something more being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, notice they began speaking. They had to speak. That's something we sometimes go, we sometimes like cross our arms, shut, you know, our jaw, clamp down on our jaw and say, make me speak. But that's not what happened on that first day. They began to speak. The Holy Spirit didn't make them speak. What he did was he gave them the ability to speak. He does his job. You do your job. He gives you the ability. You speak. It's a partnership. And that is the way God does everything. It's just so mind-boggling that the creator of the world wants to partner with us for everything. So great. So uh, you uh, could have an ability and not use it or exercise it. I have the ability to play piano, but I really don't get to do it much anymore. I do have that ability, but I haven't done it in over a week. It, uh, you can have the ability to speak in tongues, but never speak in tongues, because you gotta, you got to do something. you got to cooperate and uh, be a part of it. The sign or the evidence of this first Spirit baptism on the day of Pentecost was speaking in other languages. And from that point on, uh, tongues was the evidence that the, the, the apostles presented as proof whether someone had been baptized in the Holy Spirit or not. So that's what they experienced. And later when there was arguments, well, I don't know if they really received the Holy Spirit, they said, well, they spoke in tongues. That, that was the sign that, that, they, that they talked about and that they used going forward. Now, could there be another evidence other than the, the uh, could there be another sign or evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit other than speaking in other tongues? Yes, there could be. But in the category that I'm looking for, I'm looking for a biblical, initial, tangible or observable sign. So uh, could it just be, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I know because I'm more loving? It could be that you became more loving, but we don't know what, what moment it was, it, you know, if you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it could be, I'm not saying no, just we don't have that sign that lets us know, okay, yeah, I, I, I know it was, it was at this time in this place. Um, it's the one tangible, biblical, initial evidence, speaking in a language you've never learned. So speaking in tongues, we would say. Now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was promised, and I, I alluded to this earlier, centuries earlier by the Father. Joel 2.28 says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. And that, I love that, that he said, I will. Because that, he's saying, that's what I want. I want everyone to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, everyone to be filled, uh, to be saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is God's desire for you and for us. That is his promise. Spirit baptism is a gift that your heavenly Father wants to give you. For some of you, it is yet unclaimed. But the Father wants to give you this gift. In Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 10, so th this was written down Jesus' words while he was, before he went to the cross, so while he was walking on earth. This is what he said. And so I tell you, he's talking about prayer. So I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. This is pretty bold. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. And we could stop there and go, this is so cool, I get to pray for whatever I want and get it. But Jesus is going to clarify this in a moment. So he, he was instructing, uh, Jesus instructed the, the believers 
uh, in that time period between resurrection and Pentecost, Jesus was instructing his followers to wait. Somebody say wait. 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 It'll be worth it. Wait. Don't go off into ministry yet. Wait. Just wait. And why would he have them wait? Is it that you always wait for the Holy Spirit? I, I believe that one key issue in the plan of God was that he was saying, wait till the day of Pentecost. I want this to be a very significant outpouring uh, on the earth and on, on, on the believers, on the church. And we're going to wait till the day of celebrating harvest to give you the tool that you need to go harvest the world and bring all the souls, just like all the people, just like wheat into the kingdom of God to worship him. It's a national spiritual, spiritual holiday. I mean, that, what a cool thing that, that God, he, he, he had it planned from the beginning of time to, that on this day it was going to be poured out. So the, these disciples, these believers, about 120 at the time, they gathered, they prayed. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, it says they were constantly united in prayer. It's really amazing what happens when a people, a congregation, a community are constantly united in prayer. And I, I, I've mentioned it. I, I just want to invite you again. If you're online, maybe you're far away, would you pray with us during our prayer gathering times, Wednesdays at 6 p.m., Sundays at 10? And if you're here, would you just um, have cereal on Sunday morning instead of an omelet and come at 10 instead of 1030 and experience prayer gathering, experience being united in prayer with your church. I've been fasting and praying every Wednesday uh, at, 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 up until prayer gathering. Then I usually eat afterwards. Uh, and I, I just want to invite you, let's, let's pray. We always pray. We believe prayer is two-way communication with God. There's, it's so powerful. And if, if we could just unite more and more and more around prayer, oh my goodness, what the Lord will do in our midst. And he's already, he's already uh, doing, I, I, I have some testimonies I want to bring to you uh, as, as time allows. There's power in unity, persistence. There, there's power in waiting. There's power in prayer. There's power. Jesus goes on in that verse I was just reading, Luke 11, 11. He says, you fathers. Okay, any fathers in the room? Can I just see your hand? Just some dads. Any dads here? Yeah, good. We're going to celebrate us pretty soon. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Bring it. Bring on the fishing poles. Fishing poles for everyone. <sighs> um, wait. <laughs> We're going to edit that out. <laughs> um, you fathers, hey dads, if your children ask for a fish, dad, I'm hungry. I, can I have some fish? Do you give them a snake instead? The obvious answer is no. Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? If they ask for something healthy, you're going to give them something that hurts them? No. Of course not. So if you sinful people, okay, okay, we deserve that, uh, know <laughs> how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? Jesus gives us a little illustration there of fathers providing for their kids. And that illustration shows us that spirit baptism nourishes your spirit in a similar way that healthy food nourishes your body. That's interesting that when he says praying for the Holy Spirit, he said that's like asking your dad for food. Yes, yes, I want you nourished. I want you built up, sustained, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is good. It is healthy for you spiritually. So I want, I want to just wrap up here with four things that get healthier in your life over time as you are filled and filled and filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of us today are going to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time today. And what are some things that God wants to do? Why does he want you to have this gift so badly? Well, first of all, you'll be strengthened through speaking in tongues. You'll be strengthened. The initial tangible evidence or sign that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. James said in the Bible, no one can tame his tongue. The tongue is an unruly member of the body. It is set on fire with hell, and it sets hellish fires. The tongue, the tongue, the tongue. 
And isn't it interesting that God says uh, as a sign that the Holy Spirit is coming on you in fullness and power, we're going to do something with your tongue and turn it around and use it to, be, to glorify God. Yeah. That is awesome and amazing. Uh, when you yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit, it becomes his tool. And spirit baptism enables you to speak to God in a language of prayer. That's not something that I made up. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, you will be speaking to God. So it's commonly called a prayer language. That is right. That is biblical. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. And he, and he says, and when you do that, you will be strengthened or built up spiritually. That's verse 4, same chapter. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Okay, so that's one of the reasons the Father wants you to have this gift. The second reason is you'll become more open to spiritual manifestations. What's a manifestation? It's a gift. It's a demonstration. It's an expression of the Holy Spirit through your life. And there's just something about once you've yielded yourself, including that old tongue, to the Lord, and he's baptized, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are more open to him doing other stuff through you. I, 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 I love that uh, l- little list of specific things, uh, manifestations or gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, things like having a word of wisdom right on time given through you, a word of knowledge, a discernment. Hey, is this of God or is this not of God? Thing, gifts like faith, healing, miracles. A verbal gifts like prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. These expressions of the Holy Spirit are more common among spirit-filled believers. We see little tastes of them throughout the Bible, even the Old Testament. When the Holy Spirit came on up, upon a person, he seemed to come on them temporarily for, for like to accomplish a specific goal. But now, since Pentecost, he comes upon us and lives in us and through us. Like he stays with us. Doesn't just come and empower us and leave. He comes and empowers us forever. So the, that, in that little list I just read, tongues is in there. The manifestation or that spiritual gift of tongues, that expression gift of tongues, is it's tongues with a different purpose, all right, to build up the church. So when, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues so that you know, okay, it happened. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and so that you have a prayer language, and so that you can be built up and strengthened. But the list I just uh, gave you, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, those are gifts, those are outward gifts. It's still tongues, but it's for a different purpose. So when Paul says, um, I thank God I speak uh, in tongues more than all of you, he's talking about prayer language. When he says, do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. He's talking about the list in the church. Do all get on a mic and speak in tongues and then someone else interprets? No. But he said, I want all of you to speak in tongues prayer language. Do you get the difference? Prayer language, gift of tongues. See the difference? Do all speak in tongues on a mic or in the church? Everyone be quiet. I'm going to speak in tongues. Do all do that? No. Do all speak in tongues prayer language? Yes. Yes, everyone. I I, I want all. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's what God says. All. That's it's for everybody. A third thing and I was supposed to be, okay, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk faster. That's, what, that's, that's the answer. Third thing, you will live more and more honorably. That's my own rephrasing. Uh, you will be more prone to righteous living. But I just, I, I think this works. You will live more and more honorably. Ephesians 5 uh, just describes the spirit-empowered life. If, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have power to lay down your life for your spouse, to raise your kids right, to to overcome Satan's strategies against you, to pray in the Spirit on all occasions, to be persistent in prayer. Look it up. Ephesians 5, 19 to, verse, to, to chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what happens in you and through you when, the, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Could you have some peace? Separately, yes, absolutely. But the, the, the Holy Spirit comes. When he comes upon you, he begins to produce this in you. It is an amazing thing. Last Sunday, we had an amazing day in church. So, it's so powerful. People came to the front spontaneously for the first time since the pandemic. We knelt. We prayed. We sought God. We said there's a hunger. How we, We're desperate for you, Lord. This last week was the craziest week in the Wakefield household. I don't know if you all know, we're buying and selling a house. Uh, our, our house uh, sale closed on Monday. 
the purchase was supposed to close the next day on Tuesday. There was a delay, four days. Okay, that changes everything. All the people we had lined up, moving companies, different things, all, every, and, and for a moment, I started to panic. Oh, oh my goodness, are we going to be like in contempt of court? Like, I mean, it just feels like such a legal, <laughs> we, we wouldn't be, it feels like such a legal thing, like you have to close when you say you're going to close, and we're closing four days later. And for a moment, I was reacting just like that. But there was, uh, I would say like within a half hour, there was a switch, and I have had unexplainable peace all week. And I keep just going, why, God? I, I've even had friends, co- they were commenting on it, like, wait, you are so chill. <laughs> and that's like unusual if you, <laughs> if you know me at all, especially on moving week with a close four days later than, than contracted. And I, I have just been so aware all week, this, the craziest of all week, I had the peace of the Holy Spirit in me. I cannot explain it any other way because it's never happened like this before. This is not my, this is not natural. This is supernatural. And I believe, uh, I, I didn't realize this until this morning. It started last week when I got on my knees. I said, I'm desperate for you, Lord. I didn't even know what was coming this week, but God did. And he put in me exactly what I needed for this week, the peace of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness, why are our sermons not allowed two hours? I don't even know. (laughs) Four. (laughs) Woo! You'll have power for verbally sharing your faith, and there's the harvest part. Why does the the Father want you to have the Holy Spirit? Because you will have power for verbally sharing your faith. Jesus said, I read it earlier, you will receive power, you will be my witness when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So cool. Uh, uh, On the day of Pentecost, After Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, inner core, he lost his fear. Like moments before, he's just always hiding, always behind closed doors, always like, don't let anyone know I'm a Christian because they might execute me too. Then the Holy Spirit comes on him. He goes out in the public place on a holiday weekend and starts preaching, and 3,000 people are saved. First time that had ever happened, and certainly the most so the church went from 120 to 3,000 because the Holy Spirit came on and gave him power for verbal witness. So I said, I intentionally put that word verbal in there. The whole, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you do have the ability to give a verbal witness. You may not use that ability, but you do have it. And the church would double if you use it. I don't mean our church. The church, big C, would double if we would all just do that. Today, we want to give you an opportunity to be born again, for Jesus to breathe on you and you receive the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're watching online today or even later uh, in the room, wherever you are, wherever you're hearing this, you have an opportunity now to be born again. We want to give you an opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some of you, like me, are going to be refilled today. Would you stand with me in the room? If you're online, why don't you stand, change your position, do something that says, okay, I'm setting aside this time, and I'm going to press into God's presence. So we're standing, we're kind of shifting, getting out of relaxed mode into focus mode, and, and just pressing into God. So would you just bow your heads and just pray with me? Lord, I bow right now before you. I bow physically as a symbol that I am bowing my will to you. I'm bowing my expectations to you. I'm bowing my words to you. And I'm submitting everything I have to you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We ask you to come the way you want to. Father, fulfill uh, another part of that same promise right here today. Fulfill your promise. Pour out your spirit on us. Jesus, baptize in your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. 
fill this place. Reveal yourself. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. down. I'm wondering if some of you, you have not yet put your faith in Jesus. You've not yet asked him to forgive you of your sins and come and change your life. Whether you're online or in the room, this is your moment. I, I, you may have been waiting, waiting for the right moment. Well, I'm just here to tell you, here it is. Here's, this is that moment. You know that moment you've been kind of thinking, well, when it's right, I'll do it. It's right. It's right. It's never going to be righter than right now. How do you put your faith in Jesus? How do you become his apprentice. Well, on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached this message. Turn from your sin. Turn your life over to Jesus. And let him lead. Let's start there. If you, in this room, or online, would like to put your faith in Jesus today, become his apprentice, turn from your sins, give your life to Jesus. If you'd like to do that, would you just raise up your hand like we've been doing? Uh, every time we prayed today, we've raised our hands for different reasons. Good, and I, I see your hand. Some of you kind of making a recommitment to the Lord. That's awesome. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer, make sure you know how. This is, you, don't have to, you don't have to pray this way, but I'd like to kind of just get you started. If today you're putting your faith in Jesus, would you pray after me? And church, let's support him. Let's just all pray. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now in Jesus' name. And Jesus, I just pray right now you would breathe your Holy Spirit into each person who's making that decision today online, maybe in days to come, right here in the room. Receive the Holy Spirit. I don't pour out the Holy Spirit. I'm just aligning with Jesus' words. I just say, receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe on him right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. And if you put your faith in Jesus today, I just really want to know. We're going to keep praying. But would you just text the same phone number, text RESTART to 97000. That will tell me this was your day. I just want to celebrate with you. So how many of you have you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit before and you know that because you, you have spoken in other tongues uh, and you would like to be refilled uh, there's a, a place in Ephesians where Jesus or where Paul writes down be filled and filled and filled with the Spirit don't be drunk be filled with the Spirit instead be filled and that word is be filled and filled and filled in Acts 431 uh, the, the the believers were they had the Holy Spirit had already been poured out, but they, they go through some trials, and after they get together, they pray for boldness. And after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of them already had been. And then they preached the Word of God with boldness. How many, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat you, want to be refilled with the Holy Spirit? Filled and filled and filled and filled. Yes. Let's pray. Let's pray. Would you lift both hands to God if you can? in the room, online, wherever we are, and let's pray for a massive refilling right now. Let's go. Would you lift your voices out loud? Lord God, we pray for boldness. We pray for everything that your Holy Spirit brings. And Lord, right now we ask you, Holy Spirit, come fill this place. 
Shake us. Shake the very foundations of this building, Lord God. Shake us where we are in our homes or cars or wherever we're listening. Lord, shake us and Holy Spirit come and fill your people once again. Some people right now are being baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time. Some are being baptized in the Holy Spirit again, being filled again. Lord, do it again. And if you are, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, I just encourage you to pray in tongues. Excuse me, out loud. You're not, you're not on a mic. No one's listening except God. But would you just pray in tongues to the Father right now? Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. We pray and we praise you with our spirit and with our mind, with our first language and with our heavenly language. We praise you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord, that right now you are refilling us. You are refilling us to fullness and to overflowing with your Holy Spirit that we could live honorably, that we could uh, be built up in our prayer language, that, that we could be witnesses for you around the world. Lord God, I thank you that you are doing those things. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are going to be more frequent in our church. Faith and healing and miracles, wisdom, knowledge, discernment, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in us. Thank you for filling us. Thank you for revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How we hunger and thirst for you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We hunger for you, Lord God. We thirst for you, for your righteousness, for your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Immerse us. Immerse us, Lord. Not waiting anymore. Not holding back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And church, I want to encourage you to be people who pray in the Spirit. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 14 where Paul talks about, I will, no, it's Ephesians. I will pray with, with my mind. I will pray with my uh, language, my English for me or your first language. I will pray with the Spirit. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing in English. Let's be worshipers. Let's be people who, when we go from this holy place that set apart for God's presence, in your car, be praying in tongues. Uh, be quietly praying uh, at work, at school. Let's be people of the Spirit of God and just see what He will do uh, in, through us in our communities, in our workplaces, schools, in our families. There's so much more that He has for us. And He fills the hungry. He fills the hungry. Come on out to prayer gathering Wednesday night if you are hungry. And, and be filled with more of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! God is doing a new thing in us, you guys. He is doing a new thing in us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus talked about new wine. And the Holy Spirit is sometimes talked about as wine. That's a metaphor for him because wine makes glad. And, and Jesus said, man, you gotta have, you got to have new wineskins. If you're going to have new wine poured in you, new Holy Spirit, so would you be willing to stretch, be moldable, be like a new wineskin, ready to receive all that God has for you? Will, you? will you do that? I challenge you and me to do that. For me, so a change I had to make, I had to, ha I had to have some regular fasting and prayer. That was something God called me to do. That's not a guilt trip. What is he calling you to do, though? What is he calling you to do? Let's do it. All right. We're, we're, we're going to probably close uh, uh, our service. I, I, I'm asking Pastor Shelley to come and do that. And then what I'd like to do, uh, well, let's, a couple things here. Was anybody 
already just now baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time. You, you, you recognize that by a sign of speaking in tongues. That's awesome. Praise God. I knew that would happen during that corporate time. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. So good. And what we'd like to do is, you know, sometimes there is a little bit of waiting. What we'd like to do is and invite pastors and Judith, our prayer leader, come on up. Why don't you come on up now? And uh, we're, we're here and we're ready and we're, we'll probably be ending the broadcast pretty soon. But we're just going to pray for you one-on-one if you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. No stress, but what a great day, Pentecost Sunday, for this to happen. And it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen for you today. All right? So when, once we close, I just invite you up and we'll just start praying for you one-on-one. We've got oil, anoint with oil and... Yeah. Yeah. So if uh, we'll just pray with you individually, and those of you that need to leave, if I'm, if you would just uh, go out into the lobby, so that this will be more of a, an atmosphere of prayer, um, and connect groups. Just so you know, we are planning on doing connect groups um, as soon as we're done in prayer. So those of you who are in this room, um, just hang out, and we'll come back together. And most of our prayer group that is in this room are going to be prayer warriors anyhow. Yeah, so right. yeah, and then. Um, uh, we will plan to meet with you again next Sunday here in the house. Um, so have a great week. God bless. Let's go ahead and have those that want prayer to come forward now. Yeah.